Hi everybody, welcome to the ninth lesson of Learn Revit API course. During this whole course, I teach you Revit API using PyRevit. However, everything you learn here can also be transferred to Dynamo Python nodes. You can use the same Revit API code, but there are a few little differences here and there, and that's what I want to explain in this video. So let's get a template from Dynamo Primer, and I will go through it and point out these differences, so you know how to migrate your code between Dynamo and PyRevit. And to do that, open the browser and search for Dynamo Primer Python template. You need this website right here. And on this page, they will explain you how to change Python template. So whenever you create new node, instead of having this default template, you can see whatever code you're gonna provide. And they provide this snippet right here. So we're gonna copy that. But also I've included this snippet in my EFPy Revit starter kit right here. When I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna open it. I also leave, left a link here from where I took it. I hope that's okay with whoever made this template. So first of all, we can see in here the UTF-8 encoding. Just gonna copy this, and this is the same thing that we need in Dynamo and PyRevit just to use different characters. Then in this primer template, you'll notice that they import CLR. And this is the core module for the Iron Python. This is what allows us to access different .NET libraries, including all Revit API classes. Without the CLR module, we wouldn't be able to use Python code with Revit. But thanks to Iron Python, we can do that. And you can see that it's used here to add references in your code. You can reference different DLL modules such as Revit API, Revit API UI, and so on. And it's necessary to import these classes. However, in PyRevit, you don't have to reference Revit API and Revit API UI. It's already done by PyRevit by default. So we'll write here imports and we'll just import all of these classes like that. There's no need to reference CLR. However, the next you will notice that we need to reference system module to import list. And we also have to do that in PyRevit because PyRevit doesn't bring this module by default. So let's copy that, paste it here, and we also would have to import CLR. And again, for those who don't know, this list is very common in Revit API. When you're gonna be looking in Revit API documentation, oftentimes you'll see that you have to use I list or I collection. And it refers to this list specific from system collection generic. And this is a typed list. Because you see in Python, for example, you'd create your Python list like this, and then inside you could put element IDs. And I'm just gonna write random numbers. But for using it in many functions, you actually have to use this typed list. And this one is not gonna work. So to do that, you would create your list of element IDs. And the biggest difference between Python list and this list is because this one is a typed list. So you have to define that all elements inside this list have to have the type of element ID. And then we can provide it. We can take this Python list, provide it here, or we could create an empty list and then add it one by one, any values we want. But they all have to be element IDs or you're gonna get errors. All right, this is just an example. Let's comment it out. And the next you can see there's Revit nodes. And unfortunately, this is not available in PyRevit. This refers to the Python nodes inside of Dynamo related to Revit. And in there, you can access different functionality as well. So this one we're gonna ignore, we're not gonna write anything. And the next one, we're gonna have a look at the Revit services. This one we also don't have to use in PyRevit because it doesn't make any sense. You see, this one allows you to import Revit services from where you can use persistence and transaction and bring document manager and transaction manager. And you need document manager to bring your variables such as doc, UI doc, and app. And this is how you do this in Dynamo. But you already know that we get our variables in PyRevit differently. I'm just gonna paste it here. And I prefer this method as I use this underscore underscore Revit to get my doc, UI doc, and app. But you could also write from PyRevit, import Revit, and get this Revit doc, Revit UI doc. And I think you also can get the application the same way. I'm gonna comment it out. And this is why we don't have to bring this document manager because we just get it differently. And the same happens in transaction, which you can see right here. In Dynamo, you have to start and commit your transactions to make changes in the project. And you do this by using transaction manager, instance, and then ensure in transaction, and you provide the document. And then when it's done, you write transaction task done. However, in PyRevit, we do this differently. I'm also gonna just paste the code so it's a little bit quicker. And you can see, we can either create a transaction instance by using Revit API class for transactions, and we can start and commit it. Or you could also use it as a context manager. You would write with transaction doc and change st, and then we would start and commit. These two are exactly the same and there's no difference. It's just about the syntax. In here, it's all in one line, but in here you'll see there's id intention, so we can put it into one context manager. Now, let me comment out one of these examples. 
And you've also noticed that I skipped that one. And this is done to unwrap elements in Dynamo. This is done so we can convert Dynamo elements into Revit API elements, because they're a little bit different classes in the background, and this helps you to take anything from Dynamo and start using it with Revit API code with Python. We don't have to do this in PyRevit, we always work in Revit API environment. And lastly, right here, you can see that you have to always take something and get it out of this Python node, so it can be used further in your Dynamo scripts. And listen, and these are pretty much the main differences between Dynamo and PyRevit. Dynamo is great for people who already know Dynamo and they want to kind of start learning Revit API one step at a time while still stay in this comfort zone. However, personally, I found so much better to use PyRevit and I also used to be a Dynamo user. So I completely abandoned that and now I only work in PyRevit. But for that, you would have to learn Revit API and Python. And this is what I hope to help you with this whole course. So yeah, I hope that you learned the main differences between Dynamo and PyRevit and in general, you know how to convert your code from one to another. And now we're getting closer to the end of this first module of Learn Revit API course. And you have one more lesson left in this module. And in there, I want to talk about the most common mistakes Revit API beginners make, and most importantly, show you how to avoid making them. So I hope to see you there, and I want you to wish happy coding. Goodbye, see you soon.